Some of you might know me as a model, a muse, a mommy, a musician. But what I am, turn that M upside down, I'm a witness. Every song you love, every giant stage of the world has a long road behind it. My name is B.B. Buell. Rock and roll has been the journey of my life. From small town Virginia, to New York, to Europe, and beyond. My love of music led me down some amazing roads in the golden era of rock. Took me to places I could never have imagined, and to people I'll never forget. And it's still leading me to incredible people and places. I was in Los Angeles with Todd Rundgren in 1974, and Todd and I had a little bit of a tiff. He left me stranded at the Continental Hyatt House with our Kawadi Monday, which is a South American raccoon, some exotic animal that he picked up when he was on the road. I know I didn't even have a credit card, and I was making pretty good money as a model, but I saw Levon Helm, who was an old friend of mine from Woodstock, and I told him my plight, and he handed me a hundred bucks. So I was able to pay it another night on my room, and um, I was in the elevator, and I was kind of sobbing. And Jimmy Page happened to come upon me in the elevator, and he had seen me one other time in New York City. Of course, Led Zeppelin, the boys were in town because they were starting their own label called Swan Song Records, and they were having a very big party at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And that was the night that I also met Groucho Marx. So of course I got to fly back to New York with, with Jimmy Page. They sort of told me, told us at check-in that the raccoon would have to be stored underneath with the baggage. Well, I cried and panicked. And Jimmy said, well, what if I buy the raccoon a first class ticket? Can we bring the raccoon into the cabin with us? And because we were the only ones in the first class cabin, they said yes. But you can't talk about that history without also including the places that created it. The smoky bars and rehearsal rooms where careers were born. The sights immortalized on iconic album covers. Or the scenes of rock and roll's triumphs and tragedies. In um, 1978, I was in London with Rod Stewart. And uh, we had gone to a football match, soccer as we know it in our country. And Elton John had a soccer team at that, at that point. It was called Watford, I think. The colors were yellow and black. And then afterwards, we, we went back to uh, Elton's, oh my goodness, I can't even explain to you how opulent and gorgeous this house was that he lived in. And we went back there, and of course, we were being very festive and partying. We'd had a few cocktails, and it was just the three of us. And at some point, Rod sort of fell asleep. He sort of conked out. So it was just me and Elton and we're sitting there talking and he said, would you like to see my diamonds? And I said, yes, um, diamond rings, diamond necklaces, diamond brooches. And I just remember trying on all these incredible, beautiful rings and I was just dripping in diamonds and he let me wear them for the whole night. That happened. <laughs> Join me and let's journey back to explore the streets and pubs where your favorite bands met, where your favorite songs were born, and to meet people who were there. Take it from me, you never know what will happen or who you'll meet. And that's what rock and roll is all about. <laughs>